Welcome and welcome back to the Marketing Made Inclusive podcast. We are so glad to have you here with us because this week is a continuation from the previous episode. If you haven't listened, we're going to dive in further to inclusive design. And this week I am joined by Jade. Hey, Jade. Hello. Uh, So Jade and I were going back and forth because admittedly, inclusive design is an area uh, for us marketers that we're not too accustomed to. Mm-hmm. I would say we have design skills, but we're not exactly designing products. You know, we're not making anything physical. At most, we're probably developing websites and developing digital things. So there's a lot that internally we talk about around visual accessibility, but we've just been diving deeper and we just wanted to share some of those resources for you. Now, For those of you listening, this is a great opportunity to head over to our YouTube or my YouTube. I think it's named after me. (laughs) If you head over to the YouTube or if you search Marketing Made Inclusive on YouTube, the podcast will come up and you'll be able to see some of the resources that we're looking at. As always, we're going to link the resources in the description, wherever you're viewing or listening, but we're going to dive into some tools. Um, one of the tools and resources I mentioned last week was the Inclusive Design Kit, um, which is developed by Microsoft. Now, Jade, I don't know if you've seen this one. Have you seen this tool? No, I'm aware of it, but I've never taken a proper look at it. It is fascinating because, for one, it's kind of like, just design-wise, it's against all of Microsoft's branding and stuff like that. So when I stumbled on it, I was just like, oh, who did this? And I was quite surprised to know that it was Microsoft. But one of the key things I love about it is how clearly it illustrates the some of the principles of inclusive design. Like mm-hmm. one of the principles is recognize exclusion. We acknowledge bias and recognize exclusion that happens when mismatches between people and experience. That is all where what we're about in inclusive marketing, recognizing who you're excluding. Learn from yeah. diversity. Inclusive design puts people in the center throughout the process. Their fresh and diverse perspectives are the key to true insight. And one of my faves, and I think this is one of your faves that you mentioned, Jade, in another form, but solve for one, extend to many. Everyone has abilities and limits. Creating products for people with permanent disabilities creates results that benefits everyone. Yeah. It's so, and it, within this resource, they have a guidebook. They have different kind of cognitive scenarios. Oh, they've added a new thing since I've last looked at it. In the pursuit of AI. Ah, oh, I. I'm going to have to dive back into this one. Live reaction here. <laughs> so they've added a new resource since I've last seen this, which is about the how biases affect artificial intelligence, which is fab. But wholeheartedly, I think this is an amazing resource for anyone who wants a quick summary because there's quick downloadable things. But it's also an amazing resource for teams because each team yeah. can take each member of the team can take a different area to focus on and then come back and present. Mm, that's a good idea. But there's so many, in it. there's like, a lot of it does focus on physical inclusivity um, in regards to disability. But I do think there's a lot that can be adapted to marketing and even adapted to when you're marketing to the disabled community and how you include them within it. I just am a big fan of a learning resource that has reading and visual videos. Yes. I'm dyslexic, so I'm just like, oh, take me to the video first. (laughs) Yeah. And sometimes it's easier to have it broken down by, you know, another person kind of in a more conversational style, more step by step. Mm Mm-hmm. Because it's not, you can get intimidated when it's a whole chunky bit of text. Yeah. Absolutely love it. What's the tool you brought to the table, Jade? So I brought the Wave Web Accessibility Evaluation Tool. And this is something that we've used before. So that's why I 
to this one in particular, I know it works. Um, and so this is the extension, I think, is the only one that I've properly played around with, but it's an extension for your whatever browser you use, and it will scan a web page and show you what's successful and what isn't, what they think needs fixing and how you can fix it. And I think they break it down into different levels as well, if I'm not mistaken. There's like a red, green, kind of amber situation. So you know what to prioritize as well, which I think is really helpful for learning what accessibility is and what people like might need help with. Then in the future, you might know what to look out for by yourself without the tool. You do start becoming alert. Like I can spot things that are color contrasted or not off the bat now. And I'm just like, ooh, that doesn't look right. Um, WAVE stands for Web Accessibility Evaluation Tool. And from what I recall as well, it's based on, oh, I always forget it. But the W, there's like this general law about accessibility online. It's like WB3 or something. Oh, I'm going to have to add it to the resource. Um, that but sounds familiar. <laughs> the reason I like the WAVE tool is because reading WAC, the WAC Accessibility Online, it is very thick and dense. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I feel like for marketers, this is a quick browser extension that you can just plug in, go. One of the favorite things I like is when I scroll on to image heavy websites and I'm just like, where's the alt text? And I'm like, I know there's yeah. no alt text. I click on it and you get it in there. I really like this. Um, So it's good for anyone who has a way, uh, Chrome, Firefox or Edge browser. And you can just click on it and it does it. I do think I might have it installed. I do. So I have it installed on my Chrome browser and amazingly their website has not scored any terrible points, which would be the irony <laughs> of it all, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, but for those watching, you can kind of see it gives you color contrast, um, references, details, all the key things. And it kind of shows you based on the colors you have on the website, what would be accessible for reading. And if it passes the WCAG, that is what it's called. The WACAC. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not going to. Uh, <laughs> thank you. And it's also free, which is what I love. Because there are a few tools mm-hmm, out there mm-hmm. that are not free. And I think gatekeeping, making websites accessible doesn't seem fair. I understand companies need to make money to make these tools better, but there's a way of doing that. So what I brought to the table next is the Inclusive Design Conference. Oh, Now, I love it because it is a completely free conference and you don't even have to sign up. They just post the whole conference on YouTube. Um, And I believe it happens almost every year. But one of the things I really like about it um, when I tuned in last year was I can just go through and just pick the videos and look into the areas that I wasn't sure about. Mm -hmm. It also inspired me to think that I would love to do an inclusive marketing conference one day putting it into the world any sponsors out there (laughs) (laughs) but it allowed people because a lot of the time some of these resources it makes you think that oh inclusive design one box and you tick it but it was so fascinating to see a a 24-hour conference as well so 24 hours of content um people diving deep into their areas like there's a video that specifically focuses on color contrast there's a speaker that specifically focuses on um, framing and how to frame things well and comics and every element of it someone's diving deep on that that's so, great isn't it and obviously their branding is fully accessible <laughs> gotta love a yellow and black combo um for those listening to those before september the next conference which is inclusive design 24 is going to be on the 21st of september this year completely free online um and you can apply to be a speaker for the year after that as well so shout out to the organizers and the supporters of putting on this free conference because honestly 
the more designers and marketers that engage with inclusive design, the better the internet's going to be. Yes, definitely. What next on the list? So next is an accessible color palette generator. This one's from Vengage, I think you pronounce that. Um, and so they'll make, they'll generate a color palette for you that's accessible, which I think kind of is one of those two birds, one stone situation because color palettes in and of themselves can be tricky anyway, especially if you're not a designer. But with this one, then you know right off the bat that it's also going to be accessible and that's not something you have to fret too, too much with in the future. I mean, I'm sure you'll still have to check things out, but this will make it a little more future proof, I think. I like it. And you can put in your own base color, I see as well. I'm just going to pop in one of our six C. Ooh, nice. <laughs> so for those listening, I have just popped in one of our brand colors for the software and it's given palettes that are accessible. This is so fascinating because there are so many color palette tools out there. Mm-hmm. And I don't remember ever seeing them giving you like, is this accessible mark or no no I feel like that's always something I'll have to double check in a in a contrast check or by myself mm. and it's nice because it gives you options as well so you put in one color and there's four different palettes you could choose from there's a vibrant palette a monochromatic palette and then two different contrasting palettes and the more there are more <laughs> so you have options oh pastel Okay, a light to dark. So you have the option. So it's giving you, because that's the other element of like inclusive design. I've heard designers say in the past or just marketers that they feel like it's limiting their creativity, but clearly you can keep going. I like this one. I'm adding this. I did not have this one. I think I had a generic color palette in my um, browser selection for when I'm looking for colors. So I'm going to add this one because it's going to make life so much easier. Two birds, one stone. Two birds, one apple. <laughs> I'm, trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to use different phrasing. I realize so many colloquial sayings are so violent. Anywho, <laughs> I digress. Um, I've got a blog that I actually have had pinned for the past three years. Uh, it's from Hootsuite. And it's social media accessibility, inclusive design tips for 2023. Now, funny I've had this pin for three years. So this means <laughs> they have been updating it, which we love because I know I haven't changed the link. But essentially, for those who don't know, Hootsuite is a very well-known marketing social media scheduling tool. I'm thinking we're talking to marketers. Who doesn't know Hootsuite? Well, you might not. You might use another tool. But Hootsuite is like one of the go to social media scheduling tools. So the fact that they have a whole blog breaking down um, how to make your designs and content accessible for social media is amazing. The fact that they're updating it as well, because I think Mm -hmm. it's only in the past two years, all the social platforms have allowed alt text. That wasn't a thing. Yeah. So... I absolutely love it. So it goes into what is inclusive design. It tells you the main things that we always say, always add alt text. Um, You can add alt text on Twitter to GIFs now as well, which yeah. is always fun to click those because it's how do people describe GIFs? <laughs> it is an interesting one. It's like how like the GIF changes. It's, it could be the same GIF, but depending on the tweet and the context, the way you describe it will change. Yes. Um, shows you how to add captions for each of the social platforms, um, how to write accessible text. Huh. We do this, but I never thought to say it. So in the accessible text, in the accessible text section, they talk about writing in plain language, the reading age, we would talk about that, not using fancy fonts, because screen readers make it hard, don't use abbreviations. This is this is really good tips not alternating capitalization except for um hashtags put blocks of hashtags in a separate comment okay 
and camel pastel case. Oh, camel case. Okay. I was like, pastel case? <laughs> they say in a camel case, you don't um, capitalize the first word, whereas Pascal case does. Have we been doing, saying the wrong thing this whole time? Oh my goodness. Okay. We need to look into that. Because I swore camel case was, that would make sense now that I reflect on it. Because I do naturally capitalize the first word anyway. Yeah. So maybe I've been doing pastel case and calling it camel case this whole time. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. L I'm learning things. I'm loving it. <laughs> Accessible visuals, uh, memes and emojis. I love that it goes into describing them and alt text for them. What is really interesting was a lot of like dominoes using emojis to draw an image is not accessible because or using not even emojis but like um brackets and you know the back in the day we used to do a smiley face where it was like a semicolon and a bracket yeah screen reader is going to read that as semicolon and a bracket it's not going to read that as smiley face so thinking about that especially when you're a big brand but yeah, I love I love this blog from Hootsuite. I love that they keep updating it and they're keeping it relevant. We need to dive back into this blog because clearly I haven't looked at it for a while. And there's some there's some gems in here. There's okay. some good resources there too. Yeah. This is the <laughs> thing that I love and is also it's amazing about our sector, inclusive marketing, inclusive design, because as technology evolves, everything we learn continues to evolve. Nothing yes. stays sedimentary. And that's kind of like the beauty of marketing as well. Yeah. I remember when I first got fell in love with marketing, I was just like, I want a sector where it doesn't feel like day to day. You know, every day feels different. One yeah. day you're creating a campaign for picture frames. The next day you're creating a campaign for a gym. The next day is for something. It's Barbie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it could be anything. Okay, what's next? I think the last two are yours, Jade. Yes. Oh, I mean, it's all just color because there's so many different um, platforms and tools that help making sure your colors are accessible. So this is the Color Oracle Color Blindness Simulator from We Are Colorblind. And I mean, it does what it says on the tin. It shows you what things will look like to a person who is colorblind. Huh. That is so fascinating. So you can apply that to your browser, your whole... Oh, it's a screen... Okay, you download it and it shows you real time. So it adds a filter. Oh, 8% of all males are affected by color vision impairment. 8%. I know. I knew it was more common in men. I didn't know that much. <laughs> huh. Now I'm going to... See, every time I see these tools, it always makes me want to do a mini project, which I'm not going to do. But it'll be fascinating how many male specific campaigns would pass a color blindness test. Yes, that would be fascinating. But now that I'm thinking about like, because you know they have the whole this, this it's like a meme in product design and stuff where you take the exact same product, but for guys you make it dark mode and for girls you make it light mode. Yeah. It's like put it in pink for women and put it in blue for men. It's like what, what? Okay, no. <laughs> but now I'm thinking of like brands like Old Spice and stuff. Like, how would would Old Spice pass a color blindness test? Yeah, that'd be a very really interesting one because there's different, obviously, um, levels to it as well. Not all colorblind people see the same, so it would mm. be fascinating to see. Yeah, Across how it would spectrum. perform. If anyone wants to do that project, feel free. And then we'll <laughs> happily send you campaigns. And do you find a way to make it across the board? Like what campaigns pass and what campaigns don't? Because that is just fascinating. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, the last one we have on the docket, 
I keep saying dockets because I've been listening to legal podcasts. The last one we have on the list is another um, colour contrast. Yeah. Yeah. Just good old fashioned um, contrast and colour accessibility. I feel like contrast checking is one of the easiest to get into your routine. It takes two seconds to just, and you, like you said, we can spot it pretty easy now, but it's also, if you're feeling a little bit unsure, then there's a good chance that it's, there's a reason for that and that you should check, especially the more you're kind of staring at colors. Um, and it's pretty easy to fix once you know, you can always put an outline around something, you can put shadows in. It's it's a good thing to get into the habit of, I think. I think, especially if you're working with external designers or external graphic designers, um, if this, this, I have not seen this in a brand guideline at all. I assume that branding specialists think of these things and they just don't implement it. But I think if you're sending a brief to an external graphic designer, putting in what your color contrast requirements are for your brand colors yeah. would be an amazing ad. I don't think we've ever received that. We do it and we implement it and we advise clients, you know, love your brand colors, but <laughs> I think I had a client the other day and I'm like, I'm loving this light sage color. However, please don't put it on white because I cannot see it. And if I cannot see it, you're impairing far more many of your customers and your potential yeah. users. So color contrast is a big one for us marketeers. Okay, that was our final resource. All the resources, as mentioned, are going to be linked in the description, wherever you're listening to or watching. And I just want to encourage those who are listening to head over to our YouTube so you can see all those tools as we're engaging with it. And if you feel like it, you know, you can click that subscribe button. You can you can just, it's a little red button. It's nice and bright, with red button with white writing. It is made in a very specific <laughs> way. YouTube thought about yes. this. <laughs> um, so head over to our YouTube channel and click it. And if you're watching or listening anywhere and you're not going to head over or you are, Either way, please do leave us a review. The reviews help us to reach a wider audience. And we want everyone talking about inclusive marketing. We want it to be the new marketing. So that's the way you can help us do that. Thank you for tuning in to the Marketing Made Inclusive podcast. And we'll speak to you soon. <laughs>